Hey guys, John here with Terminal Goblin Games, and I'm here with another podcast. This time it's available on Anchor. That means you guys can drop me voicemail and participate in the conversation. I do this with a few shows, such as Clerics Wear Ringmail and Bandits Keeps uh, podcasts. Now I will warn you that you need an account on Anchor to send me a voicemail, and uh, it is proprietary, but if that bothers you, uh, then you can always email me at john at terminalgoblingames.com with your reply, and I'll just read it on air. Anyways, let's get on to the topic of today's show, the living dungeon. What I mean by this is running a dungeon which is not static, that is uh, just sitting around waiting on the players to come back and clear it out. Uh, Main topic being dungeon restocking. So this means uh, rooms that are previously cleared, traps previously triggered, etc. are restocked. But not all of them, of course. We want to avoid a video game-esque respawning just as much as the video game we have everything cleared, so there's no point coming back here. I'll talk about two different ways in which I employ this. The first is based on time away from the dungeon and uh, rolling. This way that it can surprise you as the DM just as much as it could as a player. Uh, What I do for this is each week the players spend outside of the dungeon, I have an X in 6 chance starting at 2. So after one week there is a 2 in 6 chance for room to be restocked. Each subsequent week, I add an X and 6 chance to a max of 5 and 6 and roll each week for each cleared and empty room. So on week 3, they have a 3 and 6 chance, etc. I add empty rooms to this because something might move in. Uh, They see an easy place to, you know, for a cozy little home, and uh, the monsters will take it. They they don't have concepts of breaking and entering. So let's say you have your list of rooms and which ones have new, new stuff. How do you determine what is in there? Well, you roll. Uh, most OSR games should have a form of dungeon stocking tables. Myself, I use Basic Fantasy uh, as my main base of my Frankenbrew game rules. So I roll a percentile for each room I determined needed to be restocked. If I get a monster, I'd roll on the Wandering Monster table for that particular floor. If a treasure or unguarded treasure, I'll roll on a treasure table to see what's there and then determine if it's trapped or whatever. Easy enough, right? Uh, the second way to do this is uh, based on the story of your dungeon so and uh, its factions. So for floor 2 of Black Falcon, uh, there's a war going on between some orcs and gnolls. I would determine if the orcs attacked the gnolls and how that went, then determine if any of those empty rooms were used to like retreat to or maybe as outposts, or maybe even just arched, or not arched, uh, marched through since having describing some footprints to the players is a good way to get them on edge. Maybe they're concerned, you know, something's walking around here, even where someone's coming to take our loot. Um, then as for determining if new monsters moved in, uh, well, that's your choice since this style is all from your brain. <laughs> Personally, I use a mixture of those two techniques depending on the day. Uh, usually I'll roll to see if a room has new stuff in it, and then roll on the restock table and decide from there. For instance, on floor 2 of Black Falcon, my players... Killed the, uh, killed the spiders in room 5, and I rolled a monster moved into a room closer to the stairs uh, leading up. So I determined that the Sturges in room 23 bred a bit too much, and now the, that the spiders were gone, they could move across that room. So a bundle of 1d10 moved into the new room with their newfound freedom of travel. And, uh, yeah, that's all. This is uh, the world's shortest podcast. <laughs> Uh, let me know how you guys restock your dungeons. I'd love to hear it. Maybe you have a cooler you know, or faster way to do it. And also, if you want me to talk about some other things, then let me know about that, too. Uh, Yeah, yeah, thank you for listening, and have a great day. See ya.